Thank you very much. Right, is the, is the sound on? Yeah, the sound is on while okay. we're recording. Well, this is the way in to my new allotment. I haven't actually bought it yet, but the deal is halfway through. So it should be ours fairly soon. You can see it's quite a narrow lane here. This is in South Leicestershire. I have a job getting round this bend. Sometimes I scratch the side of the car on the Hawthorn. Right, here we go. And the idea of the plot, I'm going to use this for growing on some of the apple seedlings which I'm breeding. Most of the seedlings are likely to be not very good, but the odd one should be worth doing something with. It's a very secluded and isolated plot up here. There we go. That's a brief walk. Okay. I'll, uh... Okay, folks. Well, we're out the car now, and we're just walking down to Nigel's new plot. Uh, this is one which you, it's not a rented one, it's one that he'll actually own. And um, unfortunately, the chap uh, died just before he was signing the paperwork, so um, it's, it's, had to have, um, it's had to go through probate. That's right, and yeah. probate came through this morning. Came through this morning. So it looks so. like when the land registry yeah. documents are sorted, then... Then, uh, then it's his. Yeah. Right, lead the way then, Nigel. Okay. The guy that used to uh, use this plot was very keen on sweet peas. He gave talks and lectures and all sorts all over the country on sweet peas and you can see the remains of his framework there which was last used a couple of years ago. So uh, where is your plot actually? Uh, it uh, starts there. Yeah, um, where those uh, two posts are? Yeah, those two posts yeah. and goes right the way across yeah. to there. Yeah. And then it goes back as far as you can see to where the brambles start. Okay. So it's, it's the whole of this semi-cleared plot. So there you are, folks. We've got this here. There's going to be quite a lot of work to do in clearing it, and I've already spent many hours cutting back the brambles by about a metre on two of the sides, as you can see. Right. And now, that... is that somebody else's land over there, and they've just let it neglect? Yeah, n nobody knows whose it is. Okay. Right. So I guess if I needed to a little bit more, I could clear some more brambles and go a bit further, but I think I've probably got enough here anyway. And this is going to be all for the apples? Yeah, the idea is we will have um, rows of apple trees, a little bit like um, a herringbone, with a sort of backbone down there, which is a, a footpath, and then um, rows of apple trees, perhaps 12 at a time, about a metre apart, going at 90 degrees. Right. So I'll have to have some way of minimising the labour. I don't want to spend my whole year pulling out weeds. Um, but, and the other problem here is there isn't a mains water supply. OK. But there is an ingenious device which perhaps we ought to go and have a look at. Yeah, Which I've been just... told about. OK, folks. Um, 300 metres square. It's, I always get mixed up with square metres and metres square, but anyway. 300 square metres. 300 square metres, they are. Um, so this is just giving you a bit of an idea. It's got quite a lot of work here. Just look at the... Yeah, you can see where I've the, cleared the brambles. Yeah. I don't know if they're going to come back again. What were these? these on them. Some sort of slabs? Rubber slabs, I think. I, don't know. I think this is a weed suppressing sheet. Right. I'm put down. So there you are, this is uh, Nigel's project and uh, we're going to be filming this. Yeah, we, we will uh, welcome suggestions as to the low labour ways of keeping the weeds down. Yeah, whilst... and especially this brambles and that. Yeah, Aren't I'll... you? Nowhere to come for your blackberries. Oh yeah, there's thousands of them. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't really, I don't really want to lose the brambles completely because no. this is a fairly exposed plot. Uh, it's quite windy up here. It's not today, but it, it usually is quite windy. And the brambles are a really good barrier right. uh, to, to the wind. Okay. And, and the other thing I like about the brambles is they don't host any apple diseases. Right. If you've got a hawthorn hedge around an apple plot, you've got a serious problem because 
well, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure if it, this is right, but my experience is that if you put an apple tree near a hawthorn hedge, the apples go scabby. Okay. Um, so I, I suspect that hawthorn is a host to a number of apple diseases and, and pathogens. Right. Wow, there's some good. beautiful blackbirds. Look, look at these folks. Yeah, I must, I must come down hey. and get some for the wine. Ooh, we're talking about blackbird picking and you said you weren't sure where. You, yeah, you obviously I, forgot it. Yes, I, I'd forgotten that. <laughs> my, my brain goes into compartments. <laughs> Blackberry and apple crumble. Yeah. yeah, we ought to pick it. Have you got any plastic bags or anything with you? Perhaps there's some in the car. Perhaps we could get a few before we go back. Oh, you have. Brilliant. Yeah, good. There's two there and uh, that... I've got four on me. Oh, excellent. So, yeah, we could probably get enough for a bit more wine then. Right, watch your step on that. It's yeah. Not, that's corny. So, isn't this exciting, folks? Nigel's already very slim. I, I dread to think what he'll be like after he's cleared all this. There's a very curious device here that was put put up by my predecessor. He was an engineer, I think, and it's a rainwater collector. And it's always full. He's got a nice tap on the bottom there, and three corrugated iron sheets. Oh, you're right there. Too. Yeah, I'm all right. Three corrugated iron sheets, which funnel the water to the centre into a 40-gallon drum. So uh, that'll be jolly useful. Right. But we're going to have to have a, an ingenious way of minimising the amount of water that we need if we've got, say, two or three hundred little trees here. We don't want them to dry out in, in the dryness of July and August. And uh, we've, so we've got to have some way of conserving the water and making sure that the, the trees don't dry, don't dry out and also right. the damage. So looking at this, that... We only need one night of heavy rain and that will fill up. That's right, yeah. yeah. So, looking at the area, if you were to base um, this on a design for a future one, or even this one, I mean, you could add another four of those around here, or maybe even more than that, mm. linked in, so the water collects in the middle one and then drains into the other ones. Yes, you could do that. Have a sort of system where the um, water from one trickles yeah. into the next and have a line of them, one a little bit lower than the one yeah, before. Yeah, you could have them in a circle round, you could, Yeah. what would you get? You would you would get a good few around there, wouldn't you? Because if, so, you, yeah. if you're covering this area anyway, if you, with something like this, then you might as well use the oh, yeah, cause you space can't, underneath. You, you can't really grow, on, yeah, you can't grow underneath, really. No. Because the, there's not enough light and the, any tree that you put nearby will deflect to the, yeah. towards the light. And you could obviously build this with some corrugated perspex. Yeah, you could. You just have to make sure that if we had high winds, it doesn't. Well, I'm, away. I'm, I'm told this has been here about 10 years. Wow. And so it has withstood gales and all sorts. So it's what's the secret? Made. It doesn't look it, but it is. Yeah. Yeah, I'll have to get my brother to um, do a bit of welding for me, I think. I, I can't weld, unfortunately. Right. That's interesting. Oh, strawberries. Oh yes, there's a, a big strawberry bed here. I picked about 20 pounds this year. Right. There's a, a bed there. Yeah. They grow like weeds on this soil. I don't know how do you, well So do soil, you take so. the runners off? Are you? I haven't, no. no. I, just, I just left it. And there's another bed down there. Right. Okay. Yeah, so I've got about, right. about 20 pounds. So let's have a look. Look at them all, folks. They're all spread out. Right. Well, there you are, aren't you? Yeah, you could, hundreds of plants. You could... Uh, well, you could, you could start replanting these. And mm. Mm. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, because each, each one of these would produce 10, 
new plants easily if left on its own. Yeah. So you've got quite a few hundred here. Yeah. The um the previous chap that was here didn't seem to be too good at composting. The three compost bins are full of what appears to be soil, which is set like concrete. Right. So he clearly just put his weeds in there and left them. Yeah. So I think some farmyard manure, which is, I'm told, is, is delivered each October, needs ordering to make the soil a bit lighter. I tried digging it with a fork about oh, three months ago when it was that the weather was very dry and it was very difficult getting the fork in. It was really quite strenuous work. Yeah. It's not quite so bad now because it's just rained. Right. But it's, it's really like hard labour, so again, I'm open to suggestion just the best way to deal with the plant. Mm. Mm. Now, I've, I have seen it on, uh, on our allotments. Um, this is a different allotment, by the way, folks. Um, but I've seen it on ours where people have used corrugated iron or similar as a fence along the edges of their plot, buried into the ground two feet. Oh, that could could be quite useful here to, to use a method like that. Obviously, you need to find somewhere what's giving it away. Or... Yeah, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna have to um, keep a, a nice open pathway all the way around yeah, the edge. Yeah, yeah, obviously, yeah. yeah. But, uh, so you still have to work on the other side, but as long as you could keep that from coming into your area, you know, because obviously even if though you're going to clear that, there's still going to be roots coming through underneath. Well, yes, I think I'm going to have to use a regular treatment of Roundup, perhaps once or twice a year. Yeah, just sorry about that, yeah. folks. I know some <laughs> of you <laughs> don't like that word. but yeah, uh, Well, I'd like to do it organically, but I've got um, two and a half allotments now, and um, I haven't got enough energy or time to... To spend it all doing it the difficult way. No, really no, happens. I understand that. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Well. Okay. Anything else to say? <sighs> we'll have to revisit the plot every now and again to show people how it's it's yeah. going on. I think. Or even with you doing things, we yeah. could. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's just a matter of how you're going to tackle it. Um, I think you need to do a little bit at a time. Yeah, I was thinking of doing. You need to. Mm. You could probably start from the top there. Yeah. And then and do a little area, and gradually work your way down. Or what I did with mine when it was overgrown, I actually did the sides all the way around the sides. I cleared it by mm. about a metre, so it was all clear. Yeah. And then I, then I gradually worked my way in. I think that. I I think that's probably what I will do. I like the idea of getting the plot well marked out and, yeah. and you can go around the whole thing and, and weeds are not going to encroach. Yeah, yeah. And then perhaps I will start at that end Yeah. and put my first 12 trees in and then dig a bit more and put my next 12 in yeah. and so on as the trees And I assume available. you're going to use, um, the best thing would be that black weed repressant material. I think so, yeah. Yeah. yeah I'll have to get advice on what, what um, is the best. And you need to use the 100 GSM. Don't yeah. use any of that 70 or any of that. You need the plastic yeah. weaving, well, weaving that's grams, one. Grams per square meter, is it? Yeah. 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 The um, yeah. it's a it's a it's got stripes in it, and you can buy it off the internet. A lot cheaper than local garden centre. Oh, I see. And I guess that it's all marked out, so it's dead easy to cut in straight lines. Yes. Yeah. And it comes in different widths. You can get it from one meter. Yeah. Well, I don't know what the upper one is, but certainly up to five meters wide. Right. Well, the beds I'm going to be using are going to be four feet wide. I need a strip about one foot wide for the, the trees and then uh, three feet of uh, footpath. Uh, that's, right. that, that's the usual spacing for apple okay. beds. Yeah. So there's more covered up. So you probably the... might be two meter wide. Would it be two meter wide then you'd need uh, a little overlap? Yes, there needs to be an overlap, doesn't there? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that sounds about right. So that probably a two metre wide might might be your best bet. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so and I'm what would, mm. one thing, what helps, I did start off this way and then I forgot about it somewhere along the line, is on the e either side you need to overlap by a few inches, bury it into the soil. 
yeah. And that Skip. way you stop the fraying. Right. So the, the, two, the two meter would be quite good because I could cut it down the center. That would give me a one meter strip. Yeah. And that's just over three feet with a little bit of extra. Yeah. I could tuck that in both sides and then, so that's three feet, and then the one foot that's left over would be where I plant the trees. Yeah. And then you'd have another three feet and a one foot yeah. for the trees and so on. Yeah. yeah. Or you can buy just buy it in one metre. You can get one metre width, can you? Yeah. That would, right. If that, you're going to do would... it that way, then that yeah. would be easier. Okay, well, you could do that, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'll have to see what the prices are. And you would get it, you buy it in 100 metres. Yeah, well, that, that's going to be enough to last me an awful long time. That'll do... Um, 300 feet. Yeah, because the, these beds here are going to be about 7 or 8 metres long. So that's about... Yeah, that'll do 16 beds then. Yeah. Mm, yeah, that'll, that'll be, be the way to do it, I think. Okay. Yeah, good.